The River Thames does have a very dark history. It's where disease would enter the London and the capital. It's also where slaves were brought in during the height of the British Empire. And there were lots of different docks that were sort of created as industry was born around them. So Execution Dock as a site was famous for, for hangings of pirates. For example, Captain William Kidd, he was hanged there after a trial. And it's a place which has been lost to time. The River Thames has changed a lot in its years over centuries. And as with many things, they fall into disrepair and, and loss. The exact site of Execution Dock, it's believed, has been lost for time. But we know that it was on the north side of the River Thames and was in Wapping, an area of London around a mile or so from the Tower of London and Tower Bridge. But what is interesting is that the area around here are a number of remains of docks or other features that have been around at the time when executions were carried out. The last hanging took place at Execution Dock in 1830, and it was a place where pirates, smugglers and mutineers would lose their lives, and it was usually by hanging that executions occurred. Execution Dock was used for around 400 years to execute many different people on the banks of the River Thames. The British Admiralty's legal jurisdiction was for all offences and crimes which were committed at sea, meaning that those who committed offences on the waves could be brought to London for execution. They would be tried by the High Court of the Admiralty, and the execution would be applied to those who partook in mutiny, murdered on the high seas and violated the Articles of War. There are many different offences that someone could be killed for, and those executed on Execution Dock often came from Marshalsea Prison or Newgate. The condemned would be taken from their prison, and they would then be paraded throughout the streets of London across London Bridge and past the Tower of London. The High Court Marshal and his deputy would lead the procession of the dead, and he would hold out a silver oar, showing that the justice was being administered by the Admiralty. Prisoners were then taken in their cart to Wapping, and there would be a priest with them who would remain with them and ask them to confess their sins, so they could be later forgiven. But the condemned would then be offered a quart of ale at a pub, on the route to help them go through the ordeal of death, and executions at the dock were very popular, and crowds would flock to see what would happen. They would line the banks of the Thames and would also be on boats that would be moored in the water opposite the gallows so that people could see the proceedings. It was usually the hangman who worked at Tyburn or Newgate Prison who carried out the executions at the dock. But hanging was usually done for acts of piracy using a shortened rope and it caused death by strangulation and could take a short while as there was no drop to break the neck. This was meant to add more pain and suffering and this became known as a marshal's dance as the condemned would dance and twitch on the gallows. The corpses were then left to hang for three tides, and they were left on the gallows so that the tide would wash over their heads. Others near to here were hanged in chains on the banks of the Thames, and also a gibbet could be found to act as a warning to all sailors on the river. What's interesting is when someone was hanged at Execution Dock, was their remains were left for three days. Three times the tide would rise and fall, to make sure that everyone around knew what was happening. The idea of the executions here were to make sure that people were put off acts of piracy and committing crimes on, on the River Thames. And that's what would happen. For example, Captain Kidd, his body was left in a gibbet for a number of days, a number of years even, and it was a terrifying thing for people to see. If you're on a ship passing on the River Thames, you would see bodies of ex-pirates along the riverbank and it would be absolutely terrifying and that's the idea of execution it's a public deterrent at the end of the day same for Tyburn same for Tower Hill the crowds would flock to see executions but they would also be terrified of what would happen to them if they committed the same crime one witness said of an execution that took place on the docks this morning a little over 10 o'clock Collie Cole and Blanche the three sailors convicted of the murder of Captain Little were brought out of Newgate and conveyed in a solemn procession to Execution Dock, there to receive the punishment awarded by law. On the cart on which they rode was an elevated stage. On this seated Collie, the principal instigator in the murder, in the middle, and his two wretched instruments on each side of him, and behind, on another seat, two executioners. Collie seemed in a state resembling that of a man, stupidly intoxicated, and scarcely awake, and the two discovered little sensibility on this occasion nor to the last moment of their existence did they, as we here make any confession. They were turned off about a quarter before twelve in the midst of an immense crowd of spectators. 
On the way to the place of execution, they were preceded by the marshal of the Admiralty in his carriage, the deputy marshal bearing the silver oar, and the two city marshals on horseback, sheriff's officers. The whole cavalcade was conducted with great solemnity. Another execution that took place on the dock was that of Captain Codlin. It was said of his execution that the mob, which had been collecting for some hours, was now immense. The streets, lamp posts, windows and roofs of houses were wonderfully crowded. The crowd was so great and the streets so narrow that they were obliged to move very slowly and with great precaution. The gallows for this execution had been created around 12 paces from the low water mark and with this it was said that Captain Codling struggled hard for three or four minutes and he was then left for 15 minutes and then was taken down. As mentioned many of the criminals such as Captain Kidd were condemned for piracy and others were then hanged in chains for their crimes and to act as a warning but sometimes special permission was given to allow the bodies of the condemned to be moved to other places around the country to be displayed for example, other ports around England. In December 1769, there were six pirates hanged in one day at Execution Dock. So here we are, the site of Execution Dock. It's strange to think that centuries before, there would be literally bodies hanging, probably from the riverbank around here, scaring the life out of people. We're on the River Thames travelling down into central London. Absolutely terrifying. You can see there also there's a there's a pub there called the, the Captain Kid after obviously one of the victims of Execution Dock. Let's have a little look to see what we can see. These buildings are beautiful. Obviously a lot of the buildings around here, these ships would be unloaded and then the materials would be taken into these sort of mill looking buildings and then and spun into different materials and different different goods to be sold. You can also see the sludge from the Thames. Not nice. So it's around here where Execution Dock was. It's strange to think some of the horrors that happened here. Yet today it's really quiet and there's, there's literally no one around. I will say this, if you are coming to London and trying to find this site, you need to be careful of a few things. For example, the tide. Luckily I'm here where it's quite low tide at this time and it's about 11 o'clock in the, in the morning. You need to keep your eye on that because you don't want to go too far and be cut off because the, the Thames is known for being very tidal and it can change very, very quickly as well. But yeah, somewhere along here, there'd be gibbets, there'd be gallows, absolutely terrifying stuff. But yeah, today this is one of London's lost execution sites and nothing, nothing stands of it. So hopefully you've enjoyed watching this different video on the Untold Past. We are going to go out a little bit more with the camera and hopefully bring you some different style content. As always, to support our channel, please like, share and also subscribe to the channel. It really does help and it doesn't cost you a penny. Most of all, have a lovely day and take care.